Good afternoon chaps, it's Friday, it's that time again, time to record another video. Well, it's getting a bit desperate, I've been shopping today for the first time, it's the first time I've been out my house in a week. Uh, I could come here, I could come here and do work but I'm not of a mind to because uh, the fact that my wife is high risk because she's asthmatic and also my daughter is asthma as well. Uh, and so I'm, I'm staying indoors, but I needed to come today to blow the car tyres up and uh, and get some equipment for my brother out of the workshop. So I thought while I was here, I'd record a little video. And what I'm doing is at long last, from China, <gasps> I hope it's not from Wuhan, uh, the switch arrived for my chainsaw. Now this chainsaw has an on-off switch here, and there's two things wrong with this on-off switch. The first thing is, whenever you touch it and switch it to off, it gives you a hell of an electric shock. And the second thing is, the chainsaw doesn't stop, so it's pretty useless. So what I'm going to do now is just whip the cover off and put the new switch in, and give it a test start up, and hope it doesn't try to kill me again. So there we go, it's the spark plug cover off. Here's the screws that I loosened earlier. This should be a very simple, straightforward job. But of course, that's the death knell of any job, isn't it? Saying, oh, that'll be simple and straightforward. It'll only take me five minutes, that. Half an hour's job, two days later. So what we do is we pull the wire off, like that, and remove the old switch. The old switch and the new switch look identical. This one is a, a genuine still one. Or at least I assume it's a genuine still one. It's been on the saw for as long as I've had it, and that's quite a long time. And that one is a, is a made in China copy. Because although the packaging is in the right colour, I mean, instead of saying steel, it just says chainsaw. I got onto Steel's website. Uh, couple of weeks ago and asked them oh, that's badly corroded and asked them if there was a, a manual available for this chainsaw and I got one by email return free of charge which was very nice so if anybody from still is watching good on you right that's the old one off now spend 20 minutes getting the new one out of the packaging oh just a minute I've got a razor blade here Split it. What's this? This does look identical. Absolutely identical. We don't need this rubber budget because we've already got this. So if we have stopped forward. No, that's clean enough. The action of that leaves something to be desired, but we shall see what we shall see. I think this cost about threatens. There we go. Well, just test it with the air go and see if it's uh, see if it's working <laughs> so <coughs> that wasn't a coronavirus cough I've got to, as usual at this time of the year terrible hair fever and blocks of sinuses so let's just go to arms resistance Let's go to number one. Let's untangle the leads. No 
contact there. And that's it. Well, it seems to be working, chaps. Let's run. That's stopped and that shorts it out, so... Off. You see? So let's put it back together. Start it up. And see if it's cured. Right, pop the wire back. Yep, that goes on okay. Yes, that's chirp, chirp paper is working. Seems to be. Chirp. Yeah, seems to be working. Right, screws back in. And two long screws go at the back. One short screw goes at the front. through the ridiculous rigmarole, getting it started and I'll bring you back. And she stops. Brilliant. Right. Another little job. Another piece of equipment that I can't use because of the lockdown. I didn't notice I was wearing this on my head. So, I'm sorry. Right, I've been having a tinker with the TIG as well, and uh, I haven't come to any firm conclusion. I'm going to have to do a lot of testing on it, because as I've probably told you before, it's a very basic TIG. It's ACDC, so it'll weld aluminium as well as stainless and ordinary steels, but it worked very well. Uh, and, and then the high frequency quit. Now, I've changed this high frequency capacitor, condenser, whatever you want to call it, and I can find no difference in the reading between the old and the new ones. I've wasted 100 quid, possibly, but we don't know. Then I suspected, well, if it's not that, what else could it be? Uh, basically, the high frequency circuit takes a feed from the main transformer, runs that to another transformer, which turns the 110 volts to, uh, I think it's 3,500 volts, uh, and then feeds it to, to the spark gap, and the condenser acts like a spring for the, uh, the whole circuit to oscillate against, which gives you the high frequency. Now, I've just tested the transformer. I've tested the primary, and I've tested the secondary and they seem to be absolutely fine. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do is go away and consult 
the circuit diagram, which I have here, which I've printed loads of off, because it's actually, there's a, there's a circuit diagram stuck inside the cover, but uh, you can't get your head into it, and it's very tiny, so what I did was take a photograph of it and enlarge it. So if anybody wants a circuit diagram for one of these, I've got one. Right, it's an interlast stroke Miller TIGMASTER HF150. So it would be the 150 amp-ish uh, Miller that looks that looks like that on the front. Okay, so if anybody needs a circuit diagram, I've got one. So I'm going to have to go through this again and see what other possible components could be faulty. I did find uh, one or two very dodgy connections, some, uh, some taped up or sleeved up spade tags, which are obviously from factory, which were a little bit loose and a little bit green, but they're not on low voltage, they're on 110 volts, so they should be, they should be okay, but you never know, I've cleaned those up and done. I've checked the switch, uh, the switch seems to be absolutely fine, but again it had a dodgy loose spade tag on the back, but it's only, it was only loose, it wasn't off. And also, again, it's, uh, it's carrying a fairly high voltage, so you wouldn't expect a little bit of looseness to stop the whole circuit working, but it's a resonant, cir resonant circuit, so you never know. Uh, basically, that's it for this week, chaps. Uh, can I see anything on this circuit diagram that could be faulty? I found no, because it's a very simple circuit, and it ends it ends in a resonant uh, resonant air code code transformer, uh, which I've just checked as well, and that's fine. But I mean, you wouldn't expect it to be anything else, but it's made out of really thick copper wire, uh, and it's air code, so you can you can see the coils. Right. Okay, we'll call that it for this week. I'll blow the car tyres up, I'll get myself back to Driffield and back to isolation again. To be honest, the scariest thing about all this is having to go around the supermarket and watch all the other people coughing. Uh, I wear a face mask. I believe I told you uh, last week about the FP, uh, FFP numbers on the face masks. If you, if you want a face mask that's going to protect you against airborne vapour particles, uh, get an FFP2 or an FFP3. FFP3 is better. Uh, that's what I wear when I'm when I'm going out. Uh, not to protect me, because I'm pretty convinced that I've already had it just after Christmas, because we were all ill. My brother went to Italy, uh, sorry, went to Switzerland and worked with other people who lived in Northern Italy, came back and immediately after, di after Christmas he was very ill, uh, high temperature, terrible cough, and was off work for nearly two weeks. My brother isn't off work for two days, never mind two weeks. Uh, and then I fell ill, but I didn't have the cough and I didn't have the uh, high temperature, but I was really ill and headache, and stiff neck and stiff shoulders, uh, and just lethargic for about two weeks, two to three weeks maybe. And then I got better, and then I came to back to Langtov, went up to my cousins, and immediately my cousin came down with it about a week later. And he, again, had the high temperature, had a terrible cough and woke up one night and couldn't breathe and had to sit on the edge of the bed and cough and cough and cough till he could breathe again. But he got over it. Uh, so there you go. So whether I'm being overcautious or not, I don't know. But basically I'm being overcautious because of the wife and kids. I don't want to be a carrier that carries it back to them. So stay well. Stay healthy. Don't go out, stay in as much as you can, and uh, good luck to you all. And I hope you like what you've seen, I hope you subscribe, and I'll see you next week. If I can think up something else to put on, I'm sure I will do. Cheers guys, see you later.